Hi guys, it's Claris, and it is two o'clock Sunday afternoon, and it is time for our regular quarantine sessions of loose painting. Uh, so I hope you guys are excited and ready. I'm just gonna wait for a few minutes, seconds for people to join in. But um, essentially what we're gonna be doing this Sunday, if you have signed up for the newsletter and you get reminders for these sessions, um, we're going to be doing um, strawberries along with our florals this time. And uh, it was a request that came in more than once and I figured let's do it. This was my practice sheet for this week. Actually, I have more than one. Um, this was just one of them. And uh, we're gonna be touching on doing some loose roses like this in this style. Uh, and it's something that I was just practicing and I like the whole light pink fading off into like the green and then all this white space it just like opens up everything really well and then there's the strawberries that we're going to be doing um, but let me show you the first time I did the strawberries I this was my first try here and it's not exactly loose but it would detail, but the white space kind of works for that. So we're probably going to do more this style than this one. Uh, but yeah, it was fun to do like the, the leaves. I'm going to show you how to do the leaves in using an angled brush. And uh, hi, Lori. Oh, thank you. Yes, I hope you can join and uh, participate with uh, all these fun, pretty creations here. But um, yes, to go back to what I was saying, I'm going to show you guys how to do um, some fairly simple leaves, like one stroke leaves rather, um, and they would look like this using an angled brush. Some of you might have it, some of you might not. Um, and then we will, um, yeah, like, yeah, I think enough rambling. Let me just get on to week in last week's video um, magnolias and so here was my effort trying to do a magnolia so we're not going to do it today but possibly next Sunday so you can stay tuned for that uh, today we're going to keep it to what I've done over here all right so for brushes um, for brushes I'm going to be using the half best like angular creative brush um, the number eight and number four in the silver black velvet where is my I cannot see in the one and then I have my whoops brushes spilling all over the place and then I have to have the number eight handy just in case um, just just a quick question. Oh, hi, Veronica from Oshawa. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Just a quick question if uh, for whoever's here, if you can tell me, um, do you prefer, would you like to try this floral right here? Just let me know in the comments if you would or wouldn't. And then for colors, honestly, guys, I don't have a lot of names uh, today. So I'm going to try my best. I went online and I did a, I, I tried to find the swatches for my uh, St. Petersburg colors. So let's see if I can list them out. And if you are following along, along with the colors as well, let's see how true it is. So, all right. Okay. So we have one yes from Artie. Uh, thank you, Artie. Okay, awesome, great. Let's let's begin. Um, so to start off, I have my sheet. I am going to just have a seat and give me one second to make sure that I have that I'm able to see comments, if any, if I look up. Okay, awesome. 
So I have all of that ready. We're ready to go. I am going to start off with the roses and I'm just going to get a pencil to lightly kind of indicate where I want them to be. So then this way we're not overusing the space. Um, so I'm just going to do um, one hip facing in this direction. And then I'll do another facing this direction. And then uh, let's do the floral because there were two people that said yes to this one right here. I think it's a kind of a rose, but it's got like a, whoops, it's shaking. It's got the, um, it's more of a light pink and a yellow than anything else, but yeah, they're fun to do. Um, kind of slightly tricky though, so just be careful with that. So we can try that, despite the fact that the color, let's let's try it, let's try it. We're just practicing anyway, so it's all good. Um, so that floral can be exactly like how it was over there. Actually, I'll make it off to the side just so that if you, at the end of your painting, if you want to scan it, digitize it, and kind of take it to the next level, then you don't have this floral kind of sitting harshly on the page. So I'll do it off to exactly like how I have it on that sheet. I'm just going to do it over here. And I'm doing this just so that I know how much space I have left to work with. And then we could just have direction, just give it some direction in terms of leaves. Um, we'll have some leaves coming out this way, some coming out that way. We'll have some strawberries kind of poking out here. And then let's do some over here as well. Uh, so if the strawberries are going up here, let's do them going down on this side. And give it some nice flow. And then so this floral can move slightly down just so it's not intersecting. Um, and then obviously we'll have the lighter, smaller florals that are all around kind of there in the background. And the buds. Okay, so let's do that. I just want to make sure I have everything thought out before I start. Okay, so th this is me just spacing it out. Um, all right, so to begin with, um, for the roses, we're going to start off with these roses. Again, let me show you if you're just joining. These are the roses we're going to be starting out with. And what I do is I do a light brush off the lightest pink you can ever think of using my squirrel mop brush because it is the best brush to lay down your color or your washes, especially when you want organic shapes. So this is my tried and true and I love it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get the, uh, the red from the Daniel Smith, which is... Uh, let me tell you the name. It's the. It is the Pyrrole Scarlet. It's the Scarlet, pretty much. And I'm going to use a light wash of the Scarlet to get the background. And then once I have that, I'm going to be using a mixture of the Scarlet and the Quinacridone Red. And for that, I'll be using the number eight and I just want to use the tip of it so when we get to there I'll walk you through that but for now let's just get the scarlet going so we can lay this down and put that sheet aside and so I already have a lot of the color kind of just on here so I'm just going to take my number one 
Da Vinci and I'm just getting some color onto my brush but like a very light wash and then once I have that I'm going to lay down the color so I'm just going to put it down with light strokes and I want to give it I want to put the do the strokes in the direction of the rose so the rose is facing this way so obviously the center is here so I want more of the color to be centered more than anything else but if if you can't get that quite right that's okay don't stress we're trying it out so the key is to make sure that you don't have too much water pooling in this area and just give it give the edges a rough edge like so so it actually looks like they could be petals it doesn't have to be a perfect circle and we can always touch on it later so don't stress about that so this is my light wash for now and if you feel like there's too much water you can always take your your napkin or paper towel and just lightly dab Now I don't have too much water so I'm not fully dabbing on <clears throat> but I do want to take off a little bit of it. So now with my number eight I'm just going to take some more of the, the red. Just dipping the tip I just want some of the red. on there and now once I have that I'm going to go and this is the direction that the rose is going to be in so the center will be around here so I'm just going to lightly do strokes that are kind of like a C motion and if you still feel like the flare is too much then you can just kind of go in and lightly dab <clears throat> And then go back get some of that color some of my colors mixed in with the quinacridone so um, I'm not too too stringent about oh it has to be only this color um, and I'm just gonna continue making these strokes kind of like where the petals are starting and ending and you're just kind of lightly doing these now the the direction that it's facing in, the petals, the line should be closer together because you see less of it. And then down here, they're a little bit more because you can see more of the petal area over here. And so you're just kind of doing these lines around and you're adding a second layer of color on here now as you go lower the center I've kept the the scarlet red but as you go lower I would start using a little more of the quinacridone red now if you find some edges are a little hard because um, there isn't any um, like the water has dried you can just go in with a brush just using water and just kind of blend it out and then that gives it that nice blendy look you don't have to stress out about it looking too hard edged when everything else is looking nice and soft all right so once we have this i am going to go in and get some light green because it's still damp so this is my light green that I have here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of it because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And I'm just going to put that put it very lightly at the edge. 
And now these are like the English roses. I don't know if any of you have them in your gardens. Um, I recently purchased some English roses last week. I think I mentioned it. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'm super excited for them to grow. They're just kind of stumps right now. But let's see. Um, so I've these, I guess this, this whole floral session is inspired by the fact that I recently purchased English roses. All right, so now I've taken the red, uh, sorry, the um, number eight again, and I am um, going to go back in this time with a little more concentration of the color on my brush. You know what, let me get a little bit more. So I'm just mixing some more on my palette and I'm just gonna go in and it's slightly drier. So we're doing the same motions and you just create your C strokes or your comma strokes. And the center, if it's like nice and dark, that is nice because you want to go dark to light. And then I'm just dipping the tip with water because I don't want the whole thing to be too dark. And then I'm just doing light strokes all around. And at some point you want it to go from dark to light where, where it like just really blends out. It's like a monochromatic blending of C strokes, if that makes any sense. And you can also put in some touches of the other red just to give it a little bit of dramatic color effect and then just continue with your strokes. And if you can mimic the strokes or the areas that you had where you placed the previous ones, then that's great um, because then we'll do the shadows in those areas. And a another thing I would do is um, if you have a reference of these flowers or a picture of these English roses, then that's also helpful in case you want to know, oh, how do I end the bottom? Um, so you can always look at something and even though I, it's kind of hard to mimic it exactly, but it'll give you an idea of, oh, like the last, the last petal is a little bit darker in color or I need to take off some of the color because there's a lot of shadow there. Or in this instance here, I'm just going to add another stray line or a stroke and just make it look like it's one that's just kind of peeping out from the rest of the floral or flower. And yeah, so there we go. And now that some areas of this are still pretty damp, now's the time to go back in and just highlight a few areas with a little bit of dark or the red if you want to use the scarlet and just kind of blop them here and there so they get a little more color or maybe add some at the side maybe some like shadow areas here you have to just be careful to ensure that the area is still damp so you can get that effect. And then for if you've done something like that where it's not damp anymore, you just go back in with your brush and just smoothen it out with just using water. And so it smooths out nicely. And then you can just move some of the color that you feel is not moving well. Um, And just smooth out some of the edges that you feel have not smoothened, smooth, smoothened out well. Uh, and yeah, there you go. You have your English rose. So let's move on to the next one. This should give you f uh, like a fairly good amount of practice by doing the second one. And so again, it's the same technique. We're getting 
some of the red or pink. This time I'm going to use some of the quinacridone pink just to kind of give it a variation. So a light pink on this and we're going to create our little oval for the floral background facing this direction. And we're just laying it down with the uh, squirrel mop brush. And so it's facing in that direction and I'm just kind of doing these loose strokes. And if you want to keep some white space in between, um, by all means, do that. So this is a lot looser than when I laid this one down. So there we go. That's that. And now, if you feel like there's too much water, uh, you can always dab some of it off. And just keep a little bit so you can have that effect that we're going to go for, which is like the loose effect. Because if you have too much water, then it spreads all around and that might not be the best effect. So now from the center, we're starting with a more saturated color on the tip of the number eight. And I'm getting some on my number eight right here and I'm going to start actually... I said saturated, but let's go slightly lighter so it has a little bit of water on it. It's not straight from the color cake. And we're just going to go and do our little C strokes. And again, if you feel like this pattern is a little bit too um, damp, you can always dab at it. I'm just going to stick with it just to see and show you guys what happens if we do if we continue this way. So it's like experimenting almost. Now I've taken some of the red in here. And I'm just doing my strokes to apply this nice color around. And as we're going lower, I am trying to make sure that I don't have too much color on my brush. All right, and then for the very end, what we're gonna do is we're adding a little bit of green just, just at the bottom. Just because I like that whole like light pink with the green effect. And I'm just gonna add some here. So it's important that your dampness is just the right amount, like it's not too much, it's not too dry, so that by the time you get down it's not completely gone and you're not getting, you're not losing out on that whole blendy effect. Um, as I mentioned before, if there's areas that are too harsh because the color or there isn't enough dampness, just kind of go in with your brush and dampen the area, just water on the brush I mean. And then now once I have this done, I'm going to go back in and get a more saturated color of either the, the quinacridone red or the scarlet, or you can do a combination of both. It's up to you. And I'm going to go back in and do the same motion. And as it's going outer, I just want it to be a lot closer and fading off. And then in here, it should be a little bit wider because you're seeing more of the, the petals here because they're facing downward. And if you feel like the color is too harsh on your brush, just dip the tip of it in your water and then continue with your strokes and 
just gonna continue doing these and then you can just kind of fade off like you don't have to add any more detail at the bottom if you like this detail to kind of like a dreamy blending of like a fog of pink right you just end it that way and then you can just do some like light strokes at the on the outside just to kind of give it that oh there's a hint of um, petal or what have you and then the same thing there and yeah so this is what I would do so I let this dry and then now we can go in for the although I feel like this might be a little bit too hard edge so I'm just kind of trying to smoothen it out and then maybe just dab a little bit of the color off because I feel like it's a little too bright or you can leave it on there we go so I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and then we can move on to the um, the leaves for now oh someone has a question checking in from hello Arizona and just order a da Vinci malt brush can you show both size one and four in your hand for comparison thank you um, yes so um, for those of you interested in the da Vinci brush it is amazing um, I do have the one and I have the four right here they are massively different um, I rarely use the four and that's mainly because um, if I use the four, then I'm probably going to, like, my floral could end up being this big on this, like, on the sheet of paper. So I kind of avoid it unless I'm working on a really large piece of paper. So, yeah, it also holds a lot of water, you can tell. Great brushes. I love them. All right, so moving on, we're going to do the leaves. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you guys how to do these leaves right here using the angular brush which is right here uh, and they're super simple I'm not going to show you anything too fancy because you can get a lot of fancy videos out there um, showing what you can do with the angular brush but this is a loose tutorial I'm going to keep it loose I'm going to keep it simple you guys can practice um, and then we can do some regular brushes uh, sorry regular leaves with some regular brushes as well so for the angular brush what I do is I use a combination of two different greens um, because you can do that because you have the heel and then you have, okay, that's not even, I'm not even going to try and remember what the words are, but like you have the, the taller edge and then you have the shorter edge. Let's go with that. And for, um, I guess for the outer edge, which is the taller area, it doesn't matter, honestly, to be honest. I'm going to use a dark green and a brown. So so according to St. Petersburg, that would be green for the dark green. And then the brown would be the, um, I believe it's the umber. So that's what I'm going to be using. So I have some of the dark green on here. I'm just going to get some of the umber straight from the pot itself uh, or the color cake rather so I'm just gonna get some of that right now and so just to show you how that's done so I'm just doing the tip and I'm rubbing some of the color at the tip and then using this edge I'm just gonna get some color from the brown that I have over here so I'm just doing this and now um, I'm gonna draw the the stem very loosely and we said we were gonna do stems over here so okay so let me just do some rearranging on here and I'm using the taller tip and I'm just going to do a very loose stroke. Wanted I wanted it to be a lot thinner, but oh well. Like it 
take some time getting used to how much you press down on here. I'm going to cheat a little and take my number four and just get some of the dark green. And I'm just going to add it on here because I want it to be darker for sure. So you can keep that handy in case. And now once I have that, I'm just going to take the taller tip again and just spread out. And then press down and then taper off. And then you get that kind of effect. Uh, let me show show you another one this way. So you're just kind of taking it out, pressing down, and tapering off. That wasn't a very good one. Let's do that again. Yeah, something like that. Um, and you can always switch out the the colors if you want a more interesting variation. So again, just to show you, taking it out and then tapering it out. Well, that was a terrible one. Let's try that again. There we go. Then you can just do some that are additionally loose and leave it at that. And then I'm um, just going to continue here. And then taper it off, taper it off out there. I've got a little bit of blue in this green here. So if you want to add some blues or um, some browns in your greens, that always, always helps to give it that nice two-toned effect for your paintings. And just go back in and get some darker greens on the stem area. While it is still damp to kind of, again, give it a nice... Uh, 2D look as opposed to a flat look. See, my hand is actually shaking right now. And then I'm just going to taper off with one more and then leave it. So that's how you do those leaves. They did a lot more than I thought I was going to, but it's okay. So now I'm going to, just to kind of have more variation of leaves on here, I'll just do some, um, I'll do some with, with the uh, number four that I had running already. And I just want them to start like from the flower itself and I'm just going to taper it off that way. So just spreading it down and then just tapering it off. And I'm just pushing the color to the edge. And then I'm just going to take a different variation of the green. So mixing some of the green with some of my brown. And I'm just going to get another one done here. And just making sure that maximum color is to the edge. So it's dark to light. And then when I find that they blend in too much like this, my, my remedy for that is I just take the brush, I dip it right into the color pan, um, and I get a whole lot of color so that when I lay it down, it looks something like this. And then you can see a stark difference between the two. Um, you can try that if you like the dark and light effect. And because I have that going there, I'm just going to add some here and just kind of taper it off, trail off rather. There we go. 
that's that. And since I have some color on here, let's just do some, um, <clears throat> let's just do some on over here. So I have some color on here already. I'm just going to do a light stroke here indicating a stem and then just lightly that way and then bringing it back down and trailing off. Um, and now uh, I'll show you something else. I'm going to use the squirrel mop brush and I'm making sure that there's no color on there it's just water and I am going to do the same method but I'm touching the edge of this leaf when I'm doing it okay that didn't quite work out as well as I thought it was going to it was supposed to flare into this area but I'll show you Let's try it again in another area. So the color was essentially supposed to go off into the area where I laid down the the water. It was supposed to just like flare up. Um, but it didn't. So we will try it again. And I'm just adding some brown at the edges. Again, this is my quick, cheap method of making sure that they don't look like one blob, but that they do look different. If you feel like there's too much water, just take your sheet and uh, paper towel and just dab. And that helps. And then you can just have some that are just light. So it doesn't look... Oh, see, it did it right there. I did a light stroke and it kind of just flared into the other. So that's what I meant by showing you what that looks like. It was just a fail over here. So we'll just leave it at that here. And then we'll do these on this side as well. So back with the angled brush. I'm just going to get some of the green and the brown and I have a darker amount of green here now so let's see how this flows and goes. So I'm just going to quickly do that and then do this and then holding it down trailing off. There that's so much better. Honestly this does take some practice because it can be a little bit confusing at first and then you can just spread out some color if you feel like it is not to your liking and then I'm just doing another one on here I cheat and sometimes I, I'll do more there we go and I'll do one last one here I like doing another one. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, and then, yeah, I think these are good enough for now. Just do some light ones later on, I guess, once we've done the strawberries. So now moving on to the strawberries. Um, We are going to use the number four and the number eight Neptune and I think we can just use these for now. So to start off, um, I think some of you might find it handy to just kind of do a very rough sketch of the strawberry just so that there is no issue in terms of direction and color and whatever because the top and the bottom of the strawberry are going to have a dark red and then the center will have a lighter red and that's pretty much like what we have over here so you want to have that nice blend um, and then a lot of white space in between so I will 
make it so that the strawberry is facing down but slightly higher so that it's not interfering with these so make them smaller as well because we don't want them too overpowering with the roses so they are like a crest shape but but a lot softer on the edges and we'll do a leaf for it here and a leaf for it here and then maybe just do another strawberry kind of over here in the background ish maybe maybe let's see so let's do the strawberries over there and then uh, on this side I think we'll have them I know I drew it right here but let's try and um, yeah that's fine let's just have it start slightly higher so it's not interfering with these leaves and it can still go up and then flare out this way so we have one strawberry coming out this way um, and we can have one coming out we'll have a leaf here a leaf here and then just one small one here maybe yeah I think we'll do that let's do that all right so to start off we are going to do the strawberry first then we'll do the vines and the leaves leaves so I am going to use my scarlet red from the Daniel Smith and what I'm doing is I'm taking a good saturated amount of that scarlet red onto my number eight so I'm just mixing it right off the color cake itself and I'm going to find my strawberry which strawberry am I going to use this one right here and I am going to lightly lay on actually before I do that I just want to make sure I have slight amount of dampness on here so I'm just gonna actually no let's not dampen it because we need the white space before I paint on just one more tip uh, we want a certain area of the berry to be like the light is hitting it so let, let's make that this area here so I'm just drawing that like an oval shape around it so I know to leave white space there and so we'll start out with the outer bit so we're just laying down the color for the shape first and then once we do that we're just kind of dabbing it on in the center leaving some white space and you're just using the tip when you're doing this so-called dabbing all right and kind of painting on the other edge and then once I have this I'm going to take the same brush and get some of the pink or the quinacridone red or uh, rose and now I'm going to do the same dabbing effect for the rose in the center uh, in the area where the light is supposed to be hitting And then once I have that, I'm going to go to the top and just kind of put that pink in there. And then at the bottom as well. And if you feel like this is uh, the color, like you want a little more contrast, instead of using the quinacridone rose, you can always mix your red with a little bit of blue and get like a darker red uh, like a maroon and then just do the bottom and the top and that should suffice as well um, but I kind of liked how it turned out on my sheet there so I am using that method here and the edges if they're slightly um, texturized that's fine because the strawberries do have that kind of texture on them 
And so I'll leave it at that. And then once I have that, I'm going to go back in with my number four. And I'm going to get some of the green. Uh, I've mixed up like a, I've mixed the dark green and the brown to get like this lighter green. So I have that on my palette. The umber and the green from the St. Petersburg, for those of you closely following colors. Um, and I'm just going to lay down the top green area of the strawberry. So I definitely need a lot more color than that. And it's okay to mix a little bit of yellow because some of the strawberries are a little bit lighter in color green. So you get that nice darker green. I don't want to touch the edge of it yet, the strawberry, because in case the color mixes and it flares up. And I'm just doing very loose strokes to indicate the green tip of it. Um, and then once I have that, I'm just going to take the same green and extend it into my stem. And if you want to add areas of dark green on your stem, just kind of go in lightly with the tip of your brush and add them here and there. Once this is dry, you can also add some green, darker green for like a two-tone green in your strawberry itself. Um, and now we're, we're going to do the, the leaf. And this is fun. This is my method of doing it because the strawberry leaf has like these outer ridges. And this is how I ended up figuring I could do it. So let me just show you. So I'm getting some green on here. And once I have a fair bit of green, I'm just going to get my leaf going, the stem first. And this is how I start. So I'm just, it's going to be like up and down motions and then to the top. So we'll do the one side first. And we're literally just doing this. And then you do the other side. And it gives you that nice tapered edge to the leaf, which is what the strawberries have, strawberry leaves have. And you can always just touch it up by single strokes once you're finished, if you are not too, too happy. And then uh, finally, just to end off, just do a center with our dark green and you can add slight hints of the leaf veins or not, it's up to you. And there you go, voila, strawberry leaf. And um, let's do another leaf while we still have this going on. So adding it on there and again, we're doing, okay, I'm going to try and do this smaller so it doesn't get too crowded in this area, but no promises at this point. So starting from here, just going to keep on doing this, shifting the page and then kind of tapering off and bring all the color down to the center. Same thing on this side. There we go. Let's just leave it at that. So this one has a lot of green on it, so you can all, you can, um, you can take a brush and with just water on it, you can swipe some of the color off if you feel like it's too much. In this case, I'm just going to do the stem and then some of the edges. So it adds some sort of color variation to it. And it's like the inverse effect of that. All right, great. So done that and now we can do one more strawberry and then we can kind of move on to the next strawberries so this this is pretty dry so if you want to go in and add some of the green 
for a more 3D effect, you can do that. 2D effect, not 3D. And now we're back to the strawberry painting. So for this one, let's do it slightly lighter. So I'm just going to get some of the red, uh, some of the Daniel Smith Scarlet Red, and I am going to just start dabbing it on. And we're making this the smaller strawberry, and this time I'm just kind of doing it all over the place. So at the top, everywhere because this is going to be a lot looser than the other one so it can end up like that and then once I have that I'm just using the same brush and I'm going to get some of the pink on here And I'm just going to add some dabs. It's very light. You can barely see it. So maybe it's better to wait for it to dry and then kind of go in. Um, yeah, I'm just fixing the edge. And then I think we should wait for it to dry and then we can always come back. Uh, or you can actually even just leave it like that. But I like the two tones. It just adds a lot more umph to a painting. So really a preference. Let's just do the, um, the, the, the green at the top of the strawberry and then we can move on. So I'm just going to get a good enough saturated amount of green on my four. And I'm just loosely doing some strokes here. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, no, I lied. I didn't leave it at that. Now I'm leaving it at that. So we'll leave it at that for now. And we can always come back with uh, adding more if that is needed. And so that's that strawberry right there. We can do some over here. And yeah, let's continue. So same amount of green and the brown, the umber and the green that I've been mixing I'm using the same thing. And I'm going to add, oh, actually, before we move on to this, no, we can do it after. We'll do it after. Um, let's do the leaves first this time, then we can do the strawberries. So this is dark enough already. I'm going to get some water on my brush and we're doing the leaf. I'm going to dip some of the brown on here just to get a nice variation. And I'm doing the same motion on the other side. And just moving the color down. And if you have white space within your leaf, that's totally fine. You know I like my white space. And uh, we can have this flowing on and do another leaf kind of flaring out that way. Since we're doing leaves right now. So again, my method is just doing this repeated motion and then kind of tapering off to the end. And moving all the color to the center. And then just get another variation or get a little bit of water just to get that two-tone, like a different green. And do the same motion. You can rotate your page or sheet just to get some flexibility in your... There we go. And that's it. And like I said, you can cheat if your shape is not perfect and you just want to get it to be a little more perfect. And yeah, there we go. So there's your strawberry leaves. Um, 
I'm just thinking maybe just do a hint of it a hint of another leaf or something on here no let's do the strawberries first you know what I always overdo things and then afterwards I regret it so back to the strawberries number eight we're getting our red let's do the same method that we did there I'm getting a nice bit of red nice chunk of red and I'm just going to okay my light is going to be here this area and we're adding that on and we want some white space in between and the edges can be a little more hard edged but you can give it some texture The white space in between so you have that and same thing on the other side tapering down and then you can leave it at that if you want to introduce the other number eight just so you don't get your colors too mixed up you can totally do that I mentioned over here I just use the same eight and I mix the pink um, to lay that on here next so this is what I'm doing just getting some pink on the other number eight and I am dabbing it on to leave some loose white space and then getting some of that pink you know what I'm going to do I'm going to mix some of the blue to get some of that darker red that I was telling you guys about just to show you what that would look like so I'm getting like this burgundy color by mixing some blue and I'm just going to add it to the top. Now that is way too dark. So I need some more red in there. Otherwise it's like this dirty. Yeah, it's like a dirty red. A uh, dirty purple rather. So you just make sure you swatch your colors well before you lay it down. I mean, this could totally work as well because you get some nice, rich looking, darker strawberries. And I'm just adding some at the bottom. Blending that in well. And then that's it leave it at that um, and then let's just do the other strawberry and then we can do the greens so for this one uh, this one is off to the side here near this so I'm just gonna make sure I draw it well so I have a sense of direction because this green leaf is still slightly damp so I'm using the number eight Princeton number eight, getting my red, and I am dabbing on on the center first. Oops, touch some of the green. Just try to be careful not to touch the green. Now this is this seems to be like lighter in color and that's okay because they don't all have to be bright I'm gonna get some of my pink because I like the pink with the red better and I am adding some of that pink at the bottom and then it's kind of blending in with the red as well adding some of it at the top And then adding the pink in the white area as well. Sorry, when I say pink, I mean the quinacridone red. In my head, I reference it as a pink because it's like this really pretty pink that shows up. So my bad for those of you who are wondering what that is. Now a little bit too much of the red has seeped into the green. So I'm just going to dab it off. And 
I'll just leave that that way. Let's just see how it how it dries off. And then the last thing that's left to do for these are the green tops for the strawberries. So I just got some of my dark green on here and I am making the stem and then some of the tops for it. So make sure if it's still damp, make sure you don't touch it too much. If you touch a little bit of it, that's okay. Um, some blending is nice because it is a watercolor painting after all. And then same thing on here. You want the same effect. Some of it has seeped into the green leaf. You can either leave it as is or maybe take the paper towel and blend it off or dampen, take it off rather. It's up to you. So leave it at that. I'm just going to do one more here actually since I did that stem. And this one can be a super light, loose strawberry done in like a few seconds. So I'm just going to do something like this and I'm going to taper it off. And just highlight it with uh, red at the top and the bottom, so a more saturated red at the top first and then at the bottom. And then leave it that way. And we're good, we've got our strawberries. Um, I'm going to leave it to you guys if you want to add more leaves or anything like that just because I don't want to prolong this and make this too too long. We're already at an hour right now and I still have one more floral to show you guys. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Uh, let me just do a quick check to see do you still want to continue for that floral or should we take call it a, call it quits and then do it next Sunday? Let me know in comments please guys. I'm just waiting to see if anyone has anything to say. Otherwise, I will continue. Thanks, Leslie. I'm just reading some comments. Love all your videos. You're so talented. Thank you. This is so sweet. Um, Ontario viewings. Hi, Sheila. I'm glad you guys find these um, find these helpful. Okay, so I, I've got I've got two people voting. One voted yes, continue. One voted next week. So maybe more votes, guys, <laughs> just so I have a better feel. How many are staying? How many are going? No? Okay. All right. You know what? I am going to... Okay, so again, I got two... Two. It's a tie again. Okay. Um, I'll continue. And for those who can't stay, you can always reference the video later on. Um, and yeah, let's just let's just let's just go with that. It's going to be an extra long session today, I guess. Okay. So um, for this one, ooh, I did a boo boo here. Okay, I'll have to figure it out. Um, Yes, so for this flower right here, this is the one that I am referencing, um, it is supposed to be a rose and we're using a pink and we're using like a light green or like a fluorescent green slash yellow. So I've mixed a light green with yellow and then for the pink sections, I have used a um, the quinacridone rose from Daniel Smith. So just going to show that to you guys really quick. Oh, and for the center, I've used the umber brown from um, St. Petersburg. So keep those colors handy and we are good to go. So I'm going to use my filbert brush that I promised you guys last week for this floral. Uh, and this part is going to be used mainly to create the inner 
the inner petals, that section right there. And then for the rest of it, you're just kind of dabbing on. It's, it's fairly quick. You just need to make sure that you have the right consistency and you're kind of leaving enough white space. I really wish I did leave more white space for this one, but it still turned out great. I still like it. Let's just see how, um, how it turns out. No promises. <laughs> so starting off, we will do the, we'll do the lay on of the pink. So I'm just mixing some of my quinacridone rose. Um, that is going to be my so-called pink for this floral. And I'm getting a an amount, let me show you my palette so you can see it. This is the consistency that I have for it. It's not too much color, but there's just enough so that when you put it down, you can see it. All right, so I'm just going to lay down the stroke. So the floor, the flower is facing this way exactly like in the first image. So I'm just gonna add the strokes like this and I'm pulling the color down. And leave some white space in between if you can. I clearly didn't over here. And now I'm just gonna dip the tip of it in some water. This is too much water. This also holds a lot of water, this brush, so be warned and I'm just kind of creating this tapered edge here which is indicative of the petals but in this direction now once I have this laid down I'm gonna go in with the same brush and just get a lot more pink on it so most saturated color of pink so I'm literally just dipping the pink straight from the from the um, color block and I'm adding it on here. Now if you have, I don't have too much dampness here so it's not flaring up as much, but it's like, I mean, I wanted it to, clearly it's not, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it's not too bad, I like it. If anything, if you desperately want that flare, we can always try going in with a brush with just water and just Kind of adding or just helping it go up rather if you want there we go and then now once I have that I am going to use the same brush um, same amount of color so I want it to be bright and I'm going to create the edges for the, um, the layers of the flowers that are coming. So to reference again, these are the layers. So we want to do that. And I'm going to start in one second. Just make sure the lighting is good. And I want it to be sporadic, lots of white space, and some nice organic shapes. And you can dip your the tip in some water to kind of get another lighter variation of the pink. And if, again, if there's too much water, just go back in with your, and just take some off. And I'm just going to give it some shape around here as well by kind of curving it up. And just leaving the edges out open. We're taking off the additional water. Okay, now once we have this, um, Mixing some of your yellow with your green to get that nice um, fluorescent 
bright green to add to the center here. But just make sure that it isn't too dark a green and more of the yellow. So I've mixed some on here. Let's just see how that comes on. And I'm just going to add it in the areas around here while it's still damp to kind of get a So it's looking like a dirty yellow. So my consistency for the yellow needs to be a lot more so that it doesn't blend quite this way with it. Because the pink is quite uh, watery or watered down. So I'm just gonna make sure my yellow green is more saturated. And there we go. Here's the more saturated yellow. And you just have to make sure that you're not getting it to blend. See, it's, yeah, I think there's too much water there. So I'm gonna try that again. And just dab off some of the water from some of the pink. So it doesn't give you that harsh blend where you, it's just like one blob of dirty color. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go in the rest here and just add some more. So this is a lot lighter. See, like these, this is nicer. And don't worry if you have too much of the yellow. Um, we can always go in or the yellow green and we can always go in and add some of the pink I'm just trying to be sporadic in your placement leaving space and then oops, let's do that here yeah and then I will go in with the pink again and this time let's use the squirrel mop and I'm going to get a healthy amount of the quinacridone rose and mix it up and have it so that it's nice and bright and now once I have that I am going to go in and just add some detail around the areas where the yellow is so it's a little brighter and then also in the area around here And you're just dabbing it away. And then towards the edge, I just like to have it be faded kind of like that <clears throat> so I'm just gonna kind of take off some of the color so it's not too bright and then have it just fade Now while we're waiting for this to dry, so we can go in with a little more of that pink and kind of highlight areas. Let me just take up some of the pink on here as well because...
we're going to go in with the number four and just get the center um, with the umber, the brown. Do we have it? You can use a brown or you can use the umber, whichever you prefer. And you're just getting a good amount so you can do these little strokes here in the center. Now you can have it touch the upper floral petal or not, it's up to you. And then the other side, I leave, leave the white space in between and just make this portion just kind of dots as opposed to lines. And there you go. You can leave it that way. And if you want, you can always have the pink kind of start from the center, which gives it a slightly more realistic blendy effect. Now we can uh, do some of the leaves. Uh, again, it's the same repetition of what I did in the leaves before. Um, it's nothing new, but I'll just show you how I did these right here. Literally just continuing with that. Uh, green on one tip, brown on the other, and you're just using the taller edge to kind of flow out and then just pressing down and then tapering off and same thing over here pressing down, tapering off there we go and you can push the color down as I normally like to do. And same thing on this side. Oh, kind of messed this one up. There we go, those are the leaves. Then you can do some in other areas as well. Um, see, this takes a little bit of getting used to. If you don't get it right away, it's totally fine. Just cheat and go in and do it with another brush. Totally fair. There we go. So you can have more flowing out from other areas too. Yep, so there we go. Um, so waiting for this to dry, and what I would end off with is, I think it didn't quite turn out as nice as this one here, but the reason is, and I, I can tell you why, it's probably because I didn't wait for the pink to dry before going in with the yellow. On this here, I did the yellow first, and then I kind of went in with the pink, but either or, you can, like, it works. Um, but it still looks nice. Like, I don't mind it at all. So, 
I hope you guys kind of got something from this, if nothing at all. <laughs> um, just fixing some areas here because I'm obsessed that way. But um, I think uh, we'll leave it at this for today just to make sure we still have something to get back to next week. So next week, I think I will continue with this and I will do the rest of these florals on here and I will add it to accentuate these areas over here. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and um, you're happy, having a good Sunday. And what else? Yeah, just hanging in there, I guess, because we're still kind of pretty much in this coronavirus situation here. But um, thanks so much for taking the time and joining me, guys. Really appreciate it. If you want to um, follow or share your stuff that you do on here, not follow or share, share your stuff that you do on here, please send me a um, um, message on Facebook or Instagram and my handles or my um, links to those are in the description below so please feel free follow me there you can always tag me Claire Scones watercolor and for this week I'm actually going to be doing a challenge this week all this week up until next Sunday or Saturday rather Sunday we kind of touch base and see how we did um, if you can practice these roses once every day just take 10 minutes and practice it and yeah let's just see how the transitions happen like do you get better do you get worse do you find techniques and colors that you